Hello everyone and welcome to JAM Academy. In this example or in this lesson, our objective is to study the motion of a car around a bank track uh, on a road coated with ice. Now, the if a road is coated with ice, effectively we can assume that there is no friction between the tires of the car and the road. Remember in the last example that we just studied, we found out that the maximum speed that a car can have around an unbanked road is given by the square root of mu s r g. In other words, the maximum speed only depends on the coefficient on the coefficient of static friction. But if the road is coated with ice, it means that mu s is essentially zero, which implies that v max is essentially zero. In other words, you cannot even drive around that circular track, not at all. So in this particular case, what do we do? In order to solve this problem, the roads are often banked. What do I mean by the road? being banked. One side of the road is raised and the other side of the road is maintained at an angle of zero. That means that the road is tilted at a certain angle. So the question I want to ask is, if the, when the road is tilted at a certain angle and coated with ice, what then provides the centripetal force required for the car to move around the circular track? In order for you to answer this question, first you need to draw a free body diagram. Now, um, we the weight of the car acts always vertically downwards. This is mg. There is a normal force acting on the car. That normal force is always perpendicular to the road. Remember, this angle is theta. This angle is theta. So what we can do is, what you can clearly see here is, we can resolve the normal force into two components. You have N sine theta, and you have N cosine theta. Now, if you resolve the forces into two components, this essentially tells you that the horizontal component of the normal force provides the centripetal force we need for the car to move around in a banked circular track. So let's start by applying Newton's um, second law. The sum of forces along the y direction is equal to n cosine theta minus mg, this is equal to zero. This means that n cosine theta is equal to mg. In other words, in other words, n is equal to mg divided by cosine theta. This is the normal force acting on the curve. Now let's apply Newton's second law along the radius. The summation of FR is going to be equal to N sine theta. This is equal to MV squared all divided by R, where R represents the radius of the road. So we now have um, N, which is MG bracket cosine theta all multiplied by sine theta equal to mv squared all divided by r. Now sine divided by cosine is tangent so mg tan theta will be equal to mv squared all divided by r. The m's will cancel. This would mean that v squared is equal to g are the tangent of theta. The tangent of theta. 
Now, in other words, in other words, V is equal to the square root of 2G R tan theta. This defines the speed limit of the road. What do you notice here? The speed limit depends on the banking angle and not the coefficient of static friction. Thank you so much and uh, remain blessed. Bye.